In December 1972, NASA launched the final manned mission to the moon. To commemorate Apollo 17's 40th anniversary, the Adler Planetarium invited the two remaining crew members to relive their experiences with the media and leave impressions of their hands and boots to be put on display. Captain Eugene A. Cernan was the pilot of Gemini 9, lunar module pilot of Apollo 10, and commander of Apollo 17. He is the last man to leave footprints on the lunar surface. The Honorable Harrison H. Schmidt was the lunar module pilot of Apollo 17. As a geologist, he is the only scientist astronaut to ever land on the moon, and later served as New Mexico's senator. For the anniversary event, they were joined by Captain James A. Lovell, who flew multiple Gemini and Apollo missions. A longtime friend of the Adler Planetarium, Captain Lovell has served on the Board of Trustees since 2007. As a part of the opening and dedication of the new Samuel C. Johnson Family Star Theater, these three human space exploration pioneers sat down for a spirited discussion with NBC Channel 5 Chicago's investigative reporter, Phil Rogers. Thank you, I want you to know something. I was 16 years old when these two gentlemen went to the moon and I remember that my family had just gotten a color television set in Oklahoma, it was the first time we ever had one. And so we got to watch this in color and I was just sitting here thinking, they saw this in color. They didn't need to see it, and, and we're going to hear about some of that tonight. I, I want to start uh, with Captain Cernan, and I know you feel strongly that the, the story of Apollo 17 is not just the story of Apollo 17, but it's the story of everything that came before. You know, a lot of people uh, have wanted to have events from one end of the country to the other to all of a sudden people to recognize that Apollo 17 was the end, was the last flight to the moon. And a lot of people can't realize or, or accept the fact it was 40 years ago. And a matter of fact, we have a generation and a half of which you are part of, some of who weren't, uh, who weren't born when Neil Armstrong walked on the surface of the moon, or at best in diapers and knee pants or maybe teenagers when, <laughs> when Jack and I walk. And 55 Chevy or? <laughs> I, I would have wrecked and, and <laughs> I like to look at tonight and any other recognition about, of Apollo 17. It's not about Jack, not about Ron Evans. It's not about me. It's not simply about Apollo 17 or the final footsteps of Apollo. It's about what happened in this country almost a half a century ago that started with Alan Shepard, the first American in space, who made those steps into space. Well, actually, I look at them as the first steps to the moon before we even knew we were going to the moon. That whole period of time, and it included all of those pathfinders of Germany, the, the Shiraz, the Glens, and the Coopers, and the Carpenters, and the rest of them. The Gemini program, the things Jim, and those of us who had a chance to fly in Gemini, all the way through Apollo to the final conclusion of Apollo, which was, I look at it as December 14th. We came home on December 19th, but December 14th, to me, concluded an era in American history that exuded American exceptionalism, and that's what we're really celebrating tonight as, as far as I'm concerned. That's what's important. You know, you've heard the phrase, we stood on the shoulders of giants. And we've used that, and we indeed did stand on the shoulders of giants of a nation. But Jack and I stood on the shoulders, in addition of a nation, of our colleagues like Jim Lovell, who preceded us and made what we did on Apollo 17 possible. That's what tonight is all about. You know, I Phil, think there is, Phil, an, there is Could an, I just add one thought to that, that uh, wonderful statement of Gene's? And standing on shoulders, we were standing on the shoulders of people whose average age was in their 20s. The Apollo program was a program that young people did. And all, everyone needs to realize that, that when you want to do great things, uh, peacefully or not so peacefully, you depend on young people. It's their courage, their stamina, their motivation that, that makes it possible to get those things done. For, for no other reason than they don't know how not to succeed. So just keep that always in mind, that Apollo and other major things this nation has done has been done by young people. And we have to keep that in mind as we think about what we might do in the future. 
Dr. Smith, there isn't a person in this room that wouldn't have traded places with you in a heartbeat to be able to stand on the moon and look back at the Earth. But if you could put us in that spot, tell us about the place you visited. Well, the Valley of Tars Litro was uh, uh, really a magnificent spot. Uh, I, I know Gene sees it in his mind, I see it in mine. Uh, it was indeed a valley deep in the Grand Canyon, at the narrowest point to where we, almost where we landed. It was only four miles across. The mountains on either side rose to six and 7,000 feet uh, above us. They were, in a sense, silhouetted against uh, a blacker than black sky being illuminated by a brighter than bright sun. And of course, anytime you wanted to f look up and see home, all you had to do was look over the South Massif and there was the Earth, this beautiful blue and white, little specks of red and orange on it from the deserts. Uh, it was just a spectacular place to be, and I, Gene and I were absorbing it continuously. Uh, I know uh, Gene thought that I was a little bit uh, flippant when he said, Jack, when you get out here, you have to take a look at the Earth. And I said, Gene, you've seen one Earth, you've seen them all. <laughs> <laughs> that was before he saw this one. <laughs> And uh, I, I said that because I had had a, a, a really a wonderful time on the way to the moon, observing the weather patterns on the Earth, practicing my hobby of meteorology and trying to <laughs> forecast what I would see the next day as the Earth rotated beneath us. And so I probably was a little flippant when I, I said that, but that's what I was thinking at the time. And indeed, you've got to remember that, that when you do look at the Earth in space or anywhere else, it, you've seen one, you've seen them all. 